Mario was a man on the rise. By 1980, he had successfully created a plumbing empire for himself. He was making profits, and there seemed to be no limit to what the man could achieve. Forbes magazine listed him as one of the richest men in the world, and time went as far as to call him man of the century. Now at this time, around 1980, me and my brother were on our way to the top. I mean, every day we were just bringing in more money. We were young, rich, and powerful. I mean, what more could two young businessmen ask for? By 1985, it all came crashing down. Then we basically hit a standstill. My brother, well, he started getting into all the drugs and the parties that surrounds you when you have this kind of wealth. I mean, can you really blame him? Mario would face what would become a lifelong drug addiction that still affects him to this day, a mushroom addiction. One day I get this call, it's from my friend. He tells me Mario's out of control. I ask what's going on. And he tells me Mario's trying to break down brick buildings for coins. He's exclaiming, I'm rich, I'm rich! And it just kept going on from there. The next day I get another call and it's Mario again. He's in the middle of the park and he's terrified of some plant. I mean, he's just out of control, screaming and causing a commotion. And I just didn't know what to do. Mario refused to seek help for his addiction and things only got progressively worse. One day I was making my rounds, getting my donuts and coffee. It's about the middle of the day and I get this call about a man. He's claiming that there are these turtles. Right, I know it sounds crazy, but he's screaming that they're everywhere, running around the streets. I get to the scene and it's just a bloody mess. And there he is, Mario, jumping on top of ordinary citizens. And Mario's convinced that they're all turtles. For some reason, he feels need to die. This addiction not only ruined Mario's career, but began taking a toll on his personal life. Mario and his longtime girlfriend Peach split up because of the drug use. After that, Mario's addiction only got worse. He would even go out on mushroom trips looking for Peach as if they were still together. I was just sitting at home watching TV when he busted down the door, raving about a princess and jumping around all over the place. I didn't know what to do, but I managed to tell him that his princess wasn't there, and then for some reason he calmed down and just walked out like nothing happened. Six similar incidents occurred before Mario finally found Peach at her father's house. Our relationship had been over for some time, but Mario consistently kept chasing after me. It got so bad that I had to file a restraining order. One incident in particular is very memorable. So I'm staying at my father's house, and Mario just walks right in and starts chasing after me, screaming, I'll save you, princess! Then my father comes into the picture. He grabs his gun and just starts unloading on him. It was so unreal. Mario was just so high. He had no idea what was going on around him. What was a man to do? I mean, this guy was trying to run off with my daughter. I had no other choice but to open fire. I honestly thought her life was in danger. Mario checked in and out of rehab centers for months trying to cope with his addiction. However, it soon became so bad that his brain was completely fried. Mario now spends his days in an asylum, too messed up from his party days. Mario's tale is a tragic one, a man that had everything and lost it. His legacy lives on, though, once a powerful and wealthy man that met his downfall. Next week on Behind the Mustache, Gordon Freeman tells his story. Well, really it wasn't too long after my debut in Half-Life that the G-Man and I started our affair. Let's go!